Many people who have loved ones in prison are really concerned about how the prison system will respond to this time of a pandemic. And so I thought I'd take an opportunity to show you in real time what I am hearing from people in prison and how I am responding to them. So I'm going to share my screen with you and log into the CoreLinks program, which is the way that people in prison are able to communicate with their family members who are outside. They have a, access to a quasi email system where we can log in to a place just like this. And I'm using my password there and I will just simply log in, click that I'm not a robot and proceed. And when I get there, I'm going to see some of the messages that I have received. And these are a few of these messages, but I know that earlier I was checking on another computer and I saw that I had one from Jennifer. And here's what she writes. I hope you're doing well and that this coronavirus stuff I am freaking out over here. I hope you are doing well with all this coronavirus stuff and I'm freaking out here. So what does that mean? There are a lot of people in prison, of course, who don't have access to immediate news. They can watch the television and see what's going on across the country, but they really don't know how to respond to it. So they reach out looking for information using this email system. So Jenny is a young woman who reached out to our team several months ago before she went in looking for assistance. She was had some challenges and that she wanted to go to a minimum security camp. But some of the decisions that made she made during sentencing or before sentencing really complicated her problem. And so she's now serving her time inside of what's called a federal detention center um, that is a low security prison in uh, Northern California. I think it's in Pleasanton, California, in the Dublin area, um, which is near San Francisco. Um, and she's writing this letter because for a lot of reasons. One, the, the prison system is changing inside as the entire country is changing and she doesn't know what to do. So she's writing her experience. They packed in so many new people, multiple buses. They're moving people from from unit to unit, even though we we're all supposed to be separate, separated. She's, they're bringing over campers. Those are people who are serving time in the camp. They're transitioning those people from the camp into the security housing. And there are some questions on why would they do that? Um, so we'll respond. I want to respond to that. I want to help people understand. Um, they're doing all kinds of craziness and bringing two more buses in tomorrow too. So there is a mixed messaging where the, the public is being told that there are no transfers within the Bureau of Prisons. But here she is reporting in real time that two new buses are coming in. Meanwhile, two weeks ago, they sent out a notice that they weren't doing transfers between institutions. So you, you see that sometimes the message that people in prison get or people in society get are different from what people in prison are experiencing or seeing. And um, she says, yeah, we got we got buses of 40 people last week and they brought over 70 inmates in from the camp and we are getting two more buses tomorrow. So so from her perspective, it is a different message from the Bureau of Prisons message, which states that they will not be doing any transfers. So I want to respond to those different matters and we'll get to that in, in a couple of different videos because I know you don't probably have time to watch this entire series and I could go on for this for, for a long time but let's continue reading her message before I craft my response what's going on on your end how have you have you heard anything about them releasing minimum to low security prisoners I have been teamed I haven't been teamed since December and I was due to be teamed since I'm 17 to 19 months away from my release that should have happened in January or March so we need to talk about what does that mean? She says, I haven't been teamed. So we would need to create a video where we're responding to that. It didn't, but my case manager is absolutely one of the worst people I've ever met. Okay. So this is, she's inside of the prison and she's saying her case manager is one of the worst people she's ever met. He was horrific to me. He refused to speak with me. I tried multiple times. I said, sir, I just got moved to this unit and I'm overdue to be teamed. And my case manager was supposed to meet with me this week. I was moved to do my teaming and the DA on my case, on my state case, was trying to call him to resolve something. He literally said to me, I don't know who you are. I know nothing about your case. Who are you? Who told you to come into my office? That's the way the team member spoke to her. I didn't call you bye bye, basically dismissing her as if she's not a human being. And then she's writing how she responded. I said, I know you don't know me, but I need someone to speak with the DA and I need to get my teaming done now. I am overdue. When is a good time for me to come back? To which the case manager responded, 
whenever I say it is. Now, not now. Goodbye. And I know how that, how humiliating and discouraging that can be. And so it's important to understand this is the communication model that goes on in prison. And we still have to maintain a positive attitude and be strong in light of this. I swear to you, that was over 45 days ago she's writing to me. He has been gone for weeks and he is not stated to return. Now, Jenny writes, I have no case manager at all. I went to the unit manager and she told me to slip a note under the door to where when he comes back. Now I am 18 months, 16 months from release and scared of this whole epidemic. We are packed in here. You know how it is. It is crazy. What the hell am I supposed to do? Complain to region? How do I do that? Should I email the associate warden? Will they retaliate against me for asking me what they're supposed to do? I am so lost in here. Please advise if you have any information or advice. I hope you and your family are staying safe and sound. Best, Jenny. Now, I'm going to reply to Jenny so that she can get a message, and then I'm going to make a series of videos that will help you uh, out here in society understand how I would have responded. I, I'm not the, the, the my, my answers I'm not claiming are the only answers. I'm just telling you, these are the strategies that I would have used to have gotten through a pandemic while I was going through prison and you know obviously the, nobody in the world has gone through what we're going through now but a mindset is what helps us during that time so let me just write her right now it says dear jenny thank you for your letter i'm very sorry to read about the challenges you and other people in prison are enduring i will respond to each to each of your questions. As you know, no one in the world has ever gone through a pandemic such as the one that we're experiencing right now. And the Bureau of Prisons is having to, has to make adjustments. like everyone else it's very hard for people in prison and it's extremely hard for the people outside who love them I have no doubt that your mother is very worried about you let me I'm actually I'm recording this call so that I can publish a response. I want other people to learn from the questions you are asking. I will block your name, but it's important to let the world know about the challenges people in prison experience best to you Michael okay so now I'm gonna I just blast a really simple email because I know it's important to her to get a response I mean, that's the biggest thing for people in prison is they you know they, they feel isolated they feel alone they feel separated from the world I remember when I was inside I frequently felt as if I were you know living on a, the on the moon and and I could I could see the world I could see the globe the the, the earth you know spinning but but I couldn't connect I couldn't be with it so it's important for us as people who advocate or help people in prison to connect and to help them understand hey we can hear you and I can give I, personally I can only show you these are the strategies that got me through 9,500 days in prison these are the strategies that I use to help other people understand what they can do during these challenging times and uh, I'm gonna film a series of shorter videos where I specifically answer the questions that Jenny asked and we'll publish them over the course of the day um, hope you're well and wishing you uh, and your family peace during these challenging times